Higher love requires that you be open. True love necessitates that you be vulnerable and let go of your calculating mind. If you want to enter a state of higher love, you have to drop your ego. Dropping the ego is tremendously difficult because we have been taught to cultivate the ego. We believe that our only treasure is our ego. We have been protecting it, decorating it, and constantly polishing it. But all that is required to fall in love is to set aside the ego. It is certainly painful. This ugly ego, this idea that I'm separate from existence, is the culmination of your entire life's work. True love can never exist without setting the ego aside. Ego does not exist anywhere else except in human beings. And ego starts growing as the child grows. The idea of our ego is illusory and psychotic. The parents and the schools, they all help to strengthen the ego for the simple reason that for centuries, man has struggled to survive and the idea has become a fixation, a deep unconscious conditioning that only strong egos can survive in the struggle of life. So we help every child become more and more strong in the ego. And that is where the problem arises. As the ego becomes strong, it starts surrounding intelligence like a thick layer of darkness. Intelligence is light. Ego is darkness. Ego is hard. And intelligence is delicate. Love gives us our first taste of being in tune with something other than our ego. Love teaches us for the first time that we can find harmony with someone who has never been a part of our ego. If we can be in harmony with a woman, a friend, or a man, why can't we be in harmony with all human beings? And if being in harmony with a single person brings such joy, wouldn't it bring more joy if we were in harmony with all humans? And if you can be at peace with all humans, why can't we be at peace with all other animals, trees, and the rest of nature? The idea of love in the minds of people has been twisted. We call it love when it meets our expectations. When it doesn't meet our set of expectations, hatred arises. We said it is bad, unlucky, and suffering when things don't meet our expectations. And we said it is all good and lucky when things meet our expectations. Our idea of love is as irrational as our idea of hate. They are both stupid. With such an idea, hatred seems more real than love. Such kinds of love only last momentarily, but hatred seems to last longer, and most of the time it remains forever. Hatred easily took over and buried the love. It is easy to forget how others used to love us. We start a war instantly when certain things don't meet our expectations in a relationship, and we strengthen the hatred deep within to win the war. The ego is the source of all negative emotions. It is the ego that is hurt and offended, and it is always at war with itself. It is the ego that is ambitious and wants to be higher and superior to others. It wants to be somebody special. It is the ego that starts feeling jealous and possessive because the ego can exist only with possessions. The more we possess, the more the ego is strengthened. It is reliant and dependent on possessions. The ego is immensely nourished with more money, prestige, and power. True love cannot exist without putting the ego aside. Your so-called love is not love at all. It's a thousand and one things other than love. It is jealousy, possessiveness, hatred, anger, and violence. This deceit passes itself off as love. It is disguised as love. It dresses up as affection and love. Because all of these things are so immensely ugly, they cannot exist without a disguise. The only true love that exists is compassion. You need to learn that self-compassion is a prerequisite for showing compassion to others. To love another person, you must first love yourself. You can't be nice to other people if you can't be nice to yourself. When you are hard on yourself, you can't be accepting and gentle towards others. Psychologically, 
It simply cannot be done. How can you be kind to others if you can't even be kind to yourself? Let go of any expectations you have of yourself and completely accept who you are right now. Get rid of any feelings of guilt or obligation. There is no expectation that you will pretend to be someone you're not. You are not obligated to take responsibility for anything that is not yours to do. You should act naturally. Just be chill and be who you are. Respect your own uniqueness. And don't attempt to be someone else. Love is like food for the spirit. It sustains us. Love nourishes the spirit in the same way that food nourishes the body. Without sustenance, the body becomes frail and without love, the spirit becomes weak. Being in love doesn't mean that you need to find a partner. True love is a state of being where you realize that you can love and receive love from just about anything and anyone around you. It is more accurate to say that true love means becoming the love rather than falling in love. Love is all about giving without expecting anything in return. The more we give without motivation, the more we become full of love. By sharing love with the universe, we will never feel empty. Emptiness arises only because of our ego. When the ego is not there anymore, love will be overflowing. And that's the only energy that is needed. It is the energy that nourishes our spiritual consciousness. And it is the same energy for all conscious manifestations. It is always at our disposal to create and to use it. Simply watch the ego, stop the fight within, drop the ego, and become like a child again, and love will start manifesting.